How's it going guys? This video is going to be on using a coolant tester to test the freeze and boil points and then also using the voltmeter to figure out the acidity of a coolant. Uh, you would use this especially before winter to make sure your coolant's not going to freeze inside your engine, cause the engine to crack. Uh, it could also cause the radiator to expand and crack, just like if you put a bottle in the freezer, it would cause a bottle to expand and crack. On the lab sheet, it asks what our freeze point is and what our boil point is, so we're going to do that first. This is the coolant tester. On one side, it has the freeze point, and if we flip it over, on the other side, it has the boil point. Now, if you properly mix the coolant, or if the coolant in the car is at the proper mixture, uh, we always go with a 50-50 mixture. That would allow us a negative 34 degree protection in the winter, and it would allow us a 265 degree Fahrenheit boil over protection in the summer. And that's what we're going for in the area that we live in here in Chicago. So the easiest place to take the coolant sample is going to be from where the radiator cap is. Now, I already took the cap off. You do always want to check that the radiator is cool to the touch. Same thing with the engine. If it's ever hot, do not open the radiator cap. We're going to take this, put the tube inside the filler neck, and we have to fill it all the way up to this little line right here. It says fluid line, a little hard to see on the camera. The other thing is, there's a little float inside here, indicator. We have to make sure when we hold it up that that indicator straight up and down. If you have it crooked, you can kind of see my other little indicator flopping around. You have to give this bulb a squeeze all the way. Kind of got it crushed in on itself. Put this inside the radiator. And hopefully we can suck up enough to fill this all the way up. There we go. Now if I take this tube out right now, it's going to drip all over. So I take it out slowly. Kind of fold it in half. I'll move this up so you can see better. I have to make sure my indicator is straight up and down. And in this case, my indicator is showing me I have a negative, looks like almost 40 degree, negative 40 degree freeze protection. So there's probably a little bit too much coolant inside this system. Um, almost needs to have a little bit more water inside of it to kind of lower that some. If I flip this around on the other side, my boil protection up around looks like 268 plus. So my red indicator goes over here to 268. That's what I'm going to write down on my sheet for the boil protection. Now a lot of people think the the lower my freeze protection, the better. The problem is the coolant does start to get a little too thick. Uh, it doesn't flow around the engine as well. So in this case, with this one, we'd probably want to add a little bit more water, water this down a little bit so it's not so thick. So that takes care of the freeze and boil point on the lab sheet. The next item that we're going to check out is the radiator level on a cold engine and also the coolant voltage. Check the level. It's a little hard to see, but you're first going to make sure this is pretty much full all the way up to the filler neck. And also, in the overflow bottle, um, won't be able to see it too well with this, but the overflow bottle has two markings. One mark is for when the engine's hot, that's where the coolant should be. The other marking is going to be lower down, it'll say cold. When the car is cold, it should be at the lower level. What happens is the coolant expands. As it expands, it goes into the bottle, and this raises up. If you were to fill it up to the full mark or the hot mark when the car was cold, that would cause it to rise even higher when the car got hot and cause it to overflow off the top. Or in this case, they got a little spelt on the side here. Slide that over a little more. They got a little spout here. This is where it would drain out if it overflowed. EPA doesn't like when we dump coolant on the ground. so. When the car is cool, it should be at the cold mark down here. When the car is hot, it should be up at the hot mark that's higher up. So that takes care of our coolant level. Final test here is testing the acidity. As coolant gets older, and coolant's one of those fluids that a lot of people ignore, as it gets older, it starts getting acidic, much like a lemon, and that causes it to start eating up a lot of the engine parts. Um, that includes head gaskets, the radiator, 
uh, heater core, things like that. I have my voltmeter set to volts, direct current. I'm going to take the negative lead. Negative lead is going to go over here on the battery. I'm going to put that on the negative post. Do not put it on the positive. Do not put it on the positive. It always has to go on the negative. My positive lead from my multimeter is going to go into my coolant. And when I drop that in, you see it shot up to about 0.21 volts. Dropping down a little bit. Settling at about 2.15. So that tells me my coolant is okay. As long as it is under 0.5 volts, 0.5, the coolant is not acidic, everything's okay. If it's above 0.5 volts, that means I need to flush my coolant and put some new fresh stuff in that uh, is not acidic. So that's how you do your coolant inspection for the lab car. Talk to you later.